I'm testing the tailstock. Fit. No rock. Still slides. And um, that's the way it should be. Of course. You also got to ensure that uh, this foot is uh, flat to the waist. So I'll test that. Try to zero the indicator here. Okay, there. No, it's not entirely flat, but so it's one hundreds. Oof. And higher. And if you loosen here, see it rises higher there might be okay depending on i mean we have to to measure the um, the real test will be to measure the spindle of course so testing the and the travel that was initially planned i think from the manufacturer here tells me that uh, this tailstock sits a little bit high at the front here so i confirmed my suspicion and then uh, since um, I measured that the foot, the top of the foot was a little bit higher. So I think I'll scrape that down. Um, it can be, I mean, in, it is in the right direction. So that when, uh, when you go here, it rises. I mean, it rises, uh, which is okay, but a, li a little bit too much, I think. Of course, uh, when the tailstock wears, it will drop down, so it is in the right direction, but as I said, a little bit too much. So I, I scraped the foot of the tailstock. Of course, we would like to do that just the minimum, because it is a chance that we become too low, which we don't want. I mean, the whole thing too low. So just uh, traveling back now, we see it um, goes some but not too much so this is more like it i think so 300s or 200 to 300 that's okay i think and now we will uh, test the center uh, height really so that, uh, we can check if the tail sock now is sitting in the correct height or at the correct height also then we adjust in and out here or the sideways travel and the way I've been taught to test the center height of the, of the positioning uh, so that you can go both cater for um, in and out and the height is to, I think it's called top down center test. You turn down a piece here to the exact diameter, I mean you mic this and then you turn down this piece to the, that diameter and then you can put it, put the two pieces together and then um, use a dial indicator on top and at the rear. Then you have both uh, the center height and the other adjustment here, or this is adjustable, so you have this also. So the top down center test, where you assume that you have <coughs> miked the barrel here first. This is now mic'd at 35 uh, millimeter. Or very close. You can mic here and then I have overshot it a little bit. So I must compensate for that also. Being a bad machinist. I overshot it with five hundredths of a millimeter. So that means that uh, it is, um, well, call it uh, two and a half uh, thousand, uh, hundredths of a millimeter less. So I would assume that this is done in the, um, if this was zero here, I would read uh, that amount lower there. But anyway, that just complicates things. 
So if I set uh, first this to read 0 at in and out travel, and I dial across here, I will expect to find that this should rise by that amount, as you saw. Um, and then that is, uh, of course, uh, just an adjustment on this uh, lathe and most lathes. And uh, then I would do the top test, just finding first. Uh, so find the center top there, okay. And then I can try to get it to zero. And now if I go across here, I expect this to, uh, to be the same. Um, error in diameter, which we should try to look beyond, of course. This is my bad machining only. But anyway, the real test is then to find out how much it rises. And now I have an extension of about, uh, well, three and a half. Let's see. 91 millimeters, which is 3.6 inches. And now if I then go back again, here, it rises the error plus uh, the upwards movement I had. So I think this is uh, acceptable really, um, this kind of upwards movement, movement by, uh, let's say, 300 of a millimeter on that uh, length that extension so with that i think i can conclude that the tailstock functions okay and set up is set up correctly and a couple of things i did mention but as you might have seen on the tailstock wipers i added uh, an extra screw hole in the plate there thought that aluminium bent more easily than the steel here but i think that this also then the original here would need an extra screw so i might do that as well as the what I forgot to mention um, for the tailstock. And as you can see here, I just lengthened the keyway in the tailstock, the extension there. Just uh, overlooked the hole there that was from before. Just leftover material I used. So very simply, just a milling operation, extending that uh, slot. Well, one last thing, the distance piece here in, uh, I used instead of the, the dial here uh, was because um, I didn't want to recess the holes any more than, than I mean, if I would have recessed it, it would have been like uh, open at this uh, side here because of the fact that this piece here is, well, just the block I had. So it would ideally be a little bit bigger to accommodate that, that so I could recess the holes and therefore use this. But I don't need that anyway. I don't uh, normally use these uh, at the handle side. And uh, a little strange thing here also, uh, this you will see on the crossfeed handle as well. They are labeled, these um, dials here, as being one thousandth of an inch or uh, not exactly then, uh, 0 0.025 millimeters. So uh, it's approximately true, but not entirely true. And this is because I think these machines are made metric, but then sold in the US, they need to be labeled or, or dials uh, or scales need to be in, uh, in Imperial. This is better shown here on the crossfeed dial. And the labeling here says two thousandths of an inch equals to five hundredths of a millimeter, which is close, close enough, but not entirely true. The Chinese, uh, I know them as very pragmatic people, so um, that's probably good enough. <laughs>